Hello, what is up guys? It's Evil Duos Time here today, back with another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be doing part two of our 3D game in which we're going to swap the default third person character that comes with the template that we created last time to the phase character that we also imported in our last section. Real quick before we begin, if you're new to the channel or enjoying the series, make sure you subscribe so you stay updated when new content and new parts to the series come out. And without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing you're going to need to do is navigate to the content browser on the left side of the screen over here and right click and create a new folder. This new folder we're going to call game mode just to keep it organized so we know where this is hiding in the game mode folder double click it to open it and right click within the folder itself we're going to be looking for a new blueprint class so go ahead and hit the blueprint class option and what you want to do is search in the all classes for a game mode so just type in game mode go ahead and click on the game mode base option that's right here additionally you could click it in this game mode base option that's right here either way you want to get to it select the game mode base we're going to call this one phase player base so right click and rename it and type in phase player base double click phase player base to open it up when you hop into this what you want to do is go over to the right side of the screen where it says details navigate to the default pawn class and in the default pawn class type in phase player character we want to take the phase player character compile and save this and you can go ahead and close this out the next thing we're going to do is navigate to the right side of our screen where we see this world settings option and we see the option for game mode override under game mode override click on that and we want to navigate to the phase player base game mode that we just created so go ahead and click on that save everything on this map to make sure you save everything hit Control shift s and that will save everything in the area the next thing we need to do is delete this third person character that's already on the map so we're just going to go ahead and click on him in the map click on him in the browser with the left mouse button and click delete key to delete him as far as navigation goes in 3D, if you don't know how to move around, if you hold down the right mouse button, it'll let you move around like this. W, A, S, and D move around, so you can aim and walk around like you're just controlling a normal person. So W, A, S, D to move, hold down the right mouse button to look around like you're playing any type of video game. So now we need a spawn point for our character. So there is one that's already in the beginning, it's called Network Player Start. You can just go ahead and delete that, we're going to make our very own. Hit Control shift s to save everything. On the left side of the screen, up in the top left corner, we're going to see the basic option and we want a player start. Just go ahead and click and drag that sucker out onto the map. It's as simple as that. Control Shift S to save everything. And now when we click play, we will have our third person phase character that we picked up from our earlier section that we just made. So pretty cool. You can walk around and move with the new phase character. Hit escape to get out of the preview. Now what we want to do is we want to make this phase person a first person character. So the reason we're actually using the phase model at all is that way we have some arms and legs to flail around. So if our player looks around, it doesn't look like they're just looking at nothing or looking at that stick figure body that we had a minute ago. So to do this, navigate to the Paragon Phase option, click on the Characters folder, Heroes, Phase, and Phase Player Character. In the viewport, we're going to make a few changes. So if you click on the camera, it's going to show you the camera boom as well as the camera itself. So you actually click on the camera boom on the left side of the screen up in the components section. We're just going to go ahead and delete that, so just press the delete key on the keyboard. That's going to tie the follow camera to the player character. So drag it up and move it around using the arrows that you see on the screen until you sort of get it centered on the player's head. If we go ahead and preview the game now, you're going to see that we have the camera on the person's head, but it's not really like socketed to anything, and also the controls are all wonky. So we need to fix this. Navigate back to our phase player character. So now that we have the camera lined up on the player's head, what we need to do is parent it to the socket that we want it to be, which in this case is going to be the head. Basically, we want the camera to follow the head. So to do that, click on the follow camera on the left side and parent it to the mesh. So all you got to do is click the camera and drag it up to the mesh. So you're going to see it's like this by default. Click it, drag it up to the mesh. That'll lock it onto the mesh. From there, click on the camera and you see the option to socket it has now popped up on the right side on the details panel. In the sockets option here, just go ahead and click the search button and type in head. And you want the option that literally just says head. So now it is stuck on the player's head, but it is also no longer lined up and it needs to be rotated as well. It's kind of tilted at like a 90 degree angle. So to rotate, click the rotate option, which is up here and click and drag it and rotate it around. It's going to be difficult because it is kind of moving around. But once you've got it lined up, get the 90 degrees fixed and then click it and move it back in place with the head. It is moving around, but get it lined up as best as you can on the player's head. And once you get it pretty close, it should be a little bit easier, smaller motion movements there. So drag it so it's sort of in the player's head, compile and save, and navigate back to the third person map, click play, and you will see that we now have a camera that follows along with the head, but it's kind of all wonky and the controls are a little messed up and hard to follow and it's kind of going all over the place. So hit escape and let's fix that. Back in the face player character, we have to check one more box. 
So go ahead and click on the follow camera. You can click it there or you can click it on the left side over here, but make sure you have the follow camera selected. And on the right side of the screen, you're going to see an option for camera options. In the camera options menu, what you want to do is click the use pawn control rotation. This is going to lock the camera to the control of the mouse. So one more thing you need to do to get the camera to lock onto the player's head is navigate to the phase player character self option in the top left corner. Scroll down the list until you get to the pawn section and in the pawn section, use controller rotation yaw. It is the second option down in this pawn section. Make sure that that box is checked. What it does is it locks the camera in Y with the player, basically so you can't turn the camera and look inside of your own head. So we go ahead and compile and save in the top left corner or control shift S to save everything. Navigate back to the third person example map and click play now you'll see that we drop into the world and we can move around and the camera doesn't move all crazily. The camera follows the player character. We can look down at our arms and our leg and we can see everything that we got here. So we basically have everything set up that we need to for a first person control scheme. And anyway, guys, that is going to be it for this video. So we've taken our third person character that started by default, turned it into this face player character and made it a first person character. You can see the camera moves around as the character's idling and looking around. So it's kind of got like a more realistic feel. The next thing we're going to do in the next video is create the beginnings of our world that the player is going to explore in our game. So I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like. Make sure you subscribe so you stay updated when the next part of the series comes out. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.